So after I adjusted the rank column, what happened was um, now the girls, the girls column got a lot wider to make up for it. It, ha it took the difference of what I've subtracted from column one. And so I want the girls and boys column to be the same. So all I have to do is select all the cells for those two columns and then open up my context menu. And if you guys remember, the context menu is basically when you right click on an, on something. So you just right click with your mouse or if you don't have a mouse or you're using a Mac, control click and then it po the little context menu pops up and then it's, it's as simple as choosing distribute columns evenly. And as you can see, there's also distribute rows evenly. So all you have to do is distribute columns evenly. And now, um, as you can see, the boys and girls columns are the same size, same width. And then um, there was also some information in the last column here. But as there's a little icon, whoops, I didn't mean to move that over. There's a little icon that says there, the information just doesn't fit. That little red icon, let me zoom in. I think it's just a dot, but anyway, that'll change as soon as I merge the three columns on the bottom to fit the entire amount of text. And we've already done that. All you have to do is select the three columns and then um, the little, the up in the control panel, it changes. And then there's the merge cell option. And then I'm also gonna center it. Okay. Again, I'm going to use the table options dialog box. And like I said before, I, I don't have to have the whole table selected because anything I do to the table options affects the entire table, not just the cells that are selected. And I'm going to just do the alternating columns, which I think it's fill, yes, alternating pattern. Under fill, I'm going to do alternating every other row. And instead of black, I want it to be yellow. And the tint will be, I'll just leave it at 20%, but you can change it. And then, um, let's see, again, I'll click OK. And then again, I'm going to, this time I have to select the whole table because I want to do the table cell options and change the stroke again to white or paper, actually. So the paper will show through and say OK. And then instead of adding a border to the whole, whole table, what I want to do this time is make my text frame that the table is inside of and give that, make it bigger, and then um, center the table within it. And if I just grab my type tool and then click inside the table, um, I can hit center, I think just like a piece of text, but I also want it centered within the frame itself. So if you guys remember, the text frame options is command or control B, B as in boy, um, and then you can align it, the actual table within the frame and center it. So now what I can do is add a border to the text frame itself, and I'm gonna pick Japanese dots, and let's see what size, maybe five points. I don't remember what it was in the book. But if I look in my preview mode, and by hitting W, I can see what it would look like. And I can adjust the frame so it's a little closer. And that is a table floating inside the text frame. And then that's the end of the second exercise.